How many of you have memorized the Ten Commandments? Pastor Tito, exception ka dito. Okay, so, uh, Pastor Tito is our doctor in the house, our dean, so memorize niyan, pabaliktad. Uh, in Hebrew, Greek, uh, Chinese, Ilongo, and uh, everything else. Okay, he's the dean, okay, he's the man. Kaya kinakabahan ako kasi isang tingin lang niya sa akin, pag wrong, wrong. Pero buti na lang, there's no condemnation in Christ. But then again, how many of you have memorized the Ten Commandments? How many of you growing up, growing up, you would always see the Ten Commandments plastered somewhere and then there's holy fear? Alam mo yun? Pag nakita mo, kulang na lang. Di ba? Dalawang tablet nakita mo, tapos nagkaganun kayo. No? <laughs> Mali po. But there's, there, sometimes there's, it brings out fear. A little background of Ten Commandments. Ten, Ten Commandments is also known as the Decalogue. Decalogue means ten words. Ten written words. It's referred to as instructions, commands, principles of God that had been given to the people of Israel, the Israelites. What comes to mind when you hear instructions and law? Ano man, narinig yun? Pag law instruction. Di ba? Sometimes do's and don'ts, di ba? Okay, they are, they, these laws were actually inscribed in two tablets of stone which were delivered to Moses in Mount Sinai. And when it was delivered, it was the time that the Israelites have already crossed the Red Sea. Remember, Moses was tasked to bring him out of the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea. Then when it parted, we get, they got there. When they were waiting for their time, naging, alam mo yun, nabago na agad yung puso ng mga Israelites. This was the time that they become entitled and at times demanding. Actually, when I was researching, I was studying this, Napaano ko, napayuko ko, tapos napailing ako. Sabi ko, Lord, are you talking to me? Because sometimes, God would pull us out from a situation, a mess. And then here comes the good times, but then we want more. This was the time that was having Israelites. O nga, pinakawalan mo kami sa mga Egyptians. Now we're here, but now we're hungry. Where's the food? Ano kakainin namin? Sana hindi mo na kami sa Egypt. Slave kami, pero hindi kami. Patay, buhay kami. Where's the food? Remember the manna in heaven? This was about that time. After that, binigyan sila ng manna for heaven? Nothing. Lalabas ka lang. Di ba? Mga, all, the, all the moms in the house, right? Can you imagine? Just magluluto ka. Wala kang lulutuin. Lalabas mo lang yung pan mo. Manna from heaven. Pagpasok mo, papakainin mo na yung mga bata. Then they became thirsty. They kept demanding, demanding, demanded, and demanded more. It actually exposes a lot of a character of humans, us. Not knowing that we've got it all. Not knowing that we're better. We're, we're in the best place there is. But we want more, 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 more. The context of the Ten Commandments, this is very important is that God has already loved, He has already redeemed, He has already delivered and carried His children so that they will be a kingdom priest and a holy nation for the Lord. Okay? Ito yung premise ito, ito yung context. When you read, every time you read your Bible, you need to know and study at least the context. Why? So that you would know kung bakit sinabi ni Lord. This is now, this is heavy, this is, this is now why the Ten Commandments is important. Okay? It is actually a declaration. It was already something. Your context ito is, I have given you everything. I have pulled you out of Egypt. Now you're no longer slaves. But then you want more. Now he, they've been redeemed. They've been delivered. Something like us. Something like how the gospel and what the gospel is in our lives. We are already free. We just did the communion. Sabi ko nga kanina, Alan, timing, communion, babalikan ngayon. Yeah, it is the finished work of Jesus. This is the context of the Ten Commandments. If we look at the Ten Commandments as do's and don'ts, if we look at the commandments as, as merely laws, tagilid po tayo dun. They are not to memorize and to do, and it, it's not a checklist. It's not. The context of the Ten Commandments is, I have loved you so much. I have delivered you. You are no longer sinners. You are now my friend. And these are 
the things I give you to protect you. These are the things, the promises I give you. Exodus 19, 4 to 6 says, You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. God has chosen the Israelites not because they were more loved. Di ba, tama yung sinabi ni, ni Alan kanina, pero may conflict to, hindi lang love, okay? But they are also favored because why? Because not that they're few, but because it's the nature of God. Kaya missional tayo, kaya kahit sino pwede pumasok dito sa church. Kaya yung na-save tayo, Hindi tinignan ni Lord kung ano yung ginawa mo, kung ano yung nagawa mo. Pagpunta natin sa heaven, walang checklist na tatanungin ka. Oh, nag-disciple ka ba? Oh, ilang making disciples in attendant mo? Oh, ilan nadala mo sa Victory Weekend? Oh, ilan ng tights na nabigay mo? Hindi. It's because God loves us and He loves us. And that grace is poured out to us. The Ten Commandments is never about obeying God so that He will love us. It's not about obeying God so that He will love us. The Bible is not about do's and don'ts. It's about God loving us and helping us to obey Him. Galing, di ba? Sinabi na, as priests, as, as, as a chosen nation, holy for His name, tutulungan pa tayo, kaya binigay yung Ten Commandments. God, God's love is never conditional. It's never conditional. There's nothing you can do that can make you love you more. There's nothing that you can do that can make Him love you less. He takes us as we are. As we are. Nothing. He's never conditional. But then again, why are we afraid or why we don't like or why we... Di ba, we as how many of you think in the Ten Commandments in the na? Di ba, parang everlasting? Nalala nyo may everlasting dati? Do you know that? Every time we, go, we would go to Baguio, naku, napaghahala tayong age ko, I'm turning 43 this year. Every time we would go to Baguio, one of the highest part of the trip is, make, is, is to buy an everlasting. Ano yung everlasting? Kasi we would always have some pagita in the house. But then my parents would always tell me, pagbunda ng Baguio, bibili tayong everlasting, bakit? Kasi whole year round yan. Paya lang, para rin yung love ni Lord. Di ba? Didikit pa ng mga ng, ng parents ko yun. My, my parents are, are God-fearing and, and, uh, and, and, and I love them for instilling this on us. Everlasting yan. Parang pagmamahal ko rin sa'yo, everlasting. Di ba? Tapos dumabas na yung grade ko, nakalimutan na yung everlasting. Why is the Ten Commandment important? Why, why is it important? Why? Because left to our own, we would be such a mess. If you would look at the laws of our land, if you would look at the laws of all the nations of the world, try it, even in Muslim countries, you would see principles that were derived from the Bible, especially from the Ten Commandments. I challenge you. Okay, I malakas loob ko the research ko nito eh. It's derived from there. It's actually the very foundation that holds all things on the universe. If you, if you, would, if you would look at the Ten Commandments, nakahati yan sa dalawa, sa dalawa. First, one, two, three, four, yata, or one, two, three. It's about the greatest commandment, which is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then the second commandment is love your neighbor. The rest is all about loving your neighbor. That's it. But then, left on our own, without the Ten Commandments, without the laws, we would be... Th- this. Uh, as soon as I got back here, binigay ko yung pasalubong kay Pastor Dennis, sabi ko sa kanya, proud na proud ako kasi nakita niya sa likod, sa target ko binili. Ang tanong kagad niya sa akin, Oh, Larry, ano, nakita mo ba doon yung gender-neutral restroom? Left and or on our own, we would be having things like this. Sometimes it's hard to even... Process it with our children. Why suddenly merong gender? Bakit? Because people make their own laws. 
people now comes up with politically sensitive, humanistically beep, 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 laws. Left on our own, we would actually self-destruct without the very foundation of the perfect love, the perfect law of the Lord. Yeah, ito, di ba, tinatawanan na lang natin ito ngayon eh. Bawal tumuwid dito, may namatay. Dati, may bawal tumuwid, baka mamatay. May, may, bawal tumuwid, may nasagasaan na. Bawal tumuwid, tumuwid sasagasaan kita. Eh. It's funny, I went to Ortiga Center, and um, before I left, I was so happy. In, in Ortiga Center, every Sunday, I forgot the street. There's a part there, there's no cars. No cars are allowed. It's like one jogging lane. Kasi one, kilo, one kilometer yung paikot. Bang bahay nila, LA, malapit dun eh. Huh? Pearl Drive. And then what they did is they removed the, the concrete barrier in the middle and they replaced it with aluminum barriers na may ilaw pag gabi. Sabi ko, wow, ang ganda. Sabi ko, no, sabi ko sobrang ano, high-tech. Sabi ko, I, I, I saw it in one of the pictures in Shanghai. Okay, pinipilit nila kasi some of the streets there, bisikleta lang at saka tao naglalakad. So, ganun yung barriers. Those barriers are to set limits para, para at least may cross pa rin. Alam mo kung anong papuntang forward, papuntang backward. Pagbalik ko, nagulat na ako. Those barriers already have strings. Can you imagine, per barrier, may umikot na string. Umikot na string. Why? Though there were a lot of pedestrian lanes, I tried to count it yesterday, I think more than eight pedestrian lanes, people still cross, not minding about the barrier. Left to our own, we would self-destruct. No laws, no boundaries. Busina lang ako, okay? I'm even talking to the children. Di ba? Left to your, on your own, you would self-destruct. We're not perfect. We don't know any better. But you know what? We, God has put us there for a reason to give you this. Kaya ngayon, usong-uso, di ba? Yung sabi nila, stop it! I didn't even vote for him. Pero sabi ko, if you can actually upheld all those laws, why not? When you see uh, this sign, what, what happens? Stop, hurry, and go. Tama ba? Tama ba? I got so convicted because of Lara. Lara, my six-year-old daughter. She would ask me before, ano, okay, what's red, what's yellow, what's green? Okay, later on, napapansin niya, pag nag-yellow, bumibilis na ako. Yeah? May comment pa minsan yun, pag lumampas na ako, sasabihin niya, never mind. <laughs> Parents, uh, sometimes our kids would convict us, tama ba? You know, I, I stopped buying, I stopped patronizing uh, pirated disc and pirated because of my children. One time, they, they show uh, the, an MTRCB commercial and nilagay doon, piracy is a crime. And I was teaching them about crime. I was telling them about, uh, uh, about crimes uh, through the Bible and then praying with them. And then suddenly, they said, so dad, if we buy the ano yan, PS2 yata yan eh. We were supposed, we came to Green Hills to buy PS2. Tapos tinanong niya, why is it so cheap here? And I said, it's pirated. And then one of them, I think it was Monty, who said, Dad, piracy is a crime. So now we're committing a crime unto God. Ang galing na turuan ko, di ba? Chinecheck ko nga ngayon kung ako nagturo asawa ko eh. But this is why we need the Ten Commandments because everybody makes up their own rules to live, to live by. What we're looking at at the next several weeks are commandments that God said. Okay. Remember, he said this. If you have your Bible, turn your Bibles to Exodus uh, 20, verse 1 and 3. Okay? Sabay-sabay natin basahin. Kung wala kayong Bible, meron tayong malaking Bible dito sa unahan. But my prayer is that you will bring your Bible. Okay? This is a church. It's cool to bring a Bible in church. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, you shall have no other gods before me. Okay? Balik tayo. Doon sa unang verse, ang sinabi dito, and God spoke all these words. Okay? This is the foundation of everything. He spoke. He spoke. Hindi huto katang isip ng inisip ng mga apostles before or gawa-gawa ng mga tao. No, He spoke. 
This is first and foremost very important why it lays the foundation of everything. God spoke all these words. This is not the opinion of your pastors. Okay, there's more than 80 pastors preaching this Sunday. It's not, it, we didn't come together and said, okay, ito yung sasabihin natin, sabay-sabay tayo. No. He spoke. And this is, not, this is not about the victory. This is not doctrine of victory. This is God saying. This is God speaking. If God is not speaking to you, I hope He does. God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, of the land uh, of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. This is why God has now has the right to demand. Bakit? Pinaalala niya sa atin. Short of saying, short-minded people, remember I took you out of your misery, brought you out of Egypt, now you're no longer slave, now I can give you this command. Because who I am and not what I did for you, I'm going to make some rules, the Lord said. This is not suggestions. This is, these are commands. Okay? Pag baka nakalimutan tayo, balik ulit tayo, context sa buhay natin. Why are you now in church? Because God changed something in you. Why are you now in church? Because there was a time when you were pleading, when you were praying, no solution happened. But then when you seek the Lord, everything else follow. Verse 3, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The love and the love and the law. Perfect love, the perfect law. A good father will have laws in the house. And the father say, para mahina. A good father will have laws in, uh, laws in the house. And the fathers would say, parang takot kayo, tinignan niyo yung asawa niyo. Gumanan ba? We would make laws. The laws that we would make are always motivated by love. It's never about, about fear. As a father, I would make laws in the house. One of those laws, no cell phone on the, on, or no digital anything on the dining table. It was hard for me too. But then it is out of love. Why? Because I want to communicate to my children properly. I don't want to be missing out things in their lives when they come back to school. And then my wife would ask me, I have communication. In the digital age that we are in, they we're talking about millennials. Millennials that do this. Millennials, are, uh, are, they, can fo- they can focus. Uh, they can multifunction. I, I, don't get, I don't get it. But always when we make laws, and there are times that my kids would break them. Okay? I come now before you, not as a perfect person, but as your pastor. Okay? Pastor Tito has been in the ministry for some time. And he is not a perfect husband. He is not a perfect father, nor am I. Not any of your pastors are perfect. We're all, all of us are a work in progress. Also, do not look at our children as perfect because they are not perfect. I, I'll, I'll tell you that, even the, my wife. But then we try something out. Why? Because of the grace of the Lord. Because of His grace now that abounds in us, we do this. And as fathers... We would set laws, and those laws are meant not to hurt them, but meant to protect them. Always when my kids would, would, would do things, and, and, and we would need to discipline them, yung unang bukang bibig namin, remember again, this is out of love. That's why we do this. It's out of love. My wife and I, isang moto namin dati, it's so, it's so hard to actually raise up a family. But then we look at God who gives us that grace. My prayer is also for parents to always have a check in your heart. Sometimes, is it true that sometimes kids are so liberated now that we actually leave them to, to comment? It's okay. But always look at their heart, what is instilled in their heart. Maybe it's a heart issue. Maybe us parents, ganun rin, heart issue rin tayo. The same way with the people of Israel, Israelites. It's a heart issue for them. When God was writing the Ten Commandments, it was actually the time that they were sinning. The people were sinning. Anyone, Moses went to Mount Sinai. Anyone yung Israelites. And what happened is that Exodus 32, And the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people, whom you brought out, out of the land of Egypt. Talagang... Pinupush ni Lord, no? Pinapaalala niya, eh. Have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf 
and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel. Remember who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Remember who God is and what God did for you. Always remember. It was the time that he was sinning. It was the time that the Israelites were sinning. That's why God wrote the Ten Commandments. The people have easily forgotten the love and the grace of God. And they ruin their idols and self-made gods. Humans, we have a short-term memory. Tama We have a very short-term memory. Or sometimes we, ha- we have a selected memory. In Proverbs 3 verse 6 said, In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. He will make your path straight. That's why it's very important to preach the gospel to yourself daily. Hindi siya event, hindi siya tradition, why every morning when you wake up, you have to pray, you have to read your Bible and talk to God. We have to make our path straight. And the way to make our path straight is always acknowledging Him. Hindi lang siya pang Sunday. Di ba? Sunday is best. No! Every day it has to be your best. That's why every day, preach the gospel to yourself. Verse 2 to 3, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of the bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. This is God's commandment. Remember, He said this. If there's three verses in the Bible that you want to memorize, unahin nyo to. Why? Because it's the foundation of everything. There should be no God before me, the Lord said. The word before there, when you look at the, uh, um, when you dig deeper from Genesis, yung before doon, hindi lang siya positional. Okay? Hindi lang siya chronological. Yung before doon, sinabi doon na kailangan walang ibang conflict kay Lord. There should be no hostility. This verse is saying, if there's anyone, anything, any situation before God, it's hostile to God. Ibig sabihin na hostile, may kalaban, may kaaway. Binabangga si Lord. Matthew 6, verse 33. Very first, not, not, not 12. <laughs> this is the very first Bible, I, uh, Bible verse I ever memorized. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. All these things. Before anything else. Gusto mas malalim pa nito? Ibig sabihin, added unto you. Ibig sabihin, kompleto ka na. Wala ka na pong kulang. Wala ka ng kulang. Whatever you're praying for, bonus na lang yun. Whatever you think you need, bonus na lang yun. Put God first. If you know God is ahead of you, if God is there, if God first, everything else is a bonus. You are complete. Do not let the world say that you are not complete. Pastor, 30 years now I'm single, you are complete. No situation, no cultural, nothing. You are complete. The Lord said, put no one, nothing before me. God first. And if there's some unforgiveness in our lives, this is the time to actually put it there. It's not just about functional gods. Alam mo yung functional gods, whether materialism, kung meron kang bisyo, hindi lang ho yun. Unforgiveness, sin pattern, pride, dishonesty, attitude, being judgmental. Ito, issue ko before, being judgmental. You have to lay it there and said, I'm letting go. Lord, do a change of heart in me. Heart check. What's, what's wrong in my heart? Bakit hindi ako maka, ma, ma, maka, maka, maka go forward? Maybe because there are things that you have to let go. The last thing for me was pride and, and being judgmental. I had to let it go. It wasn't easy. It was hard. It was gut-wrenching. But then I said, I want God first. I want to move forward. I want God first. I want God first always in my life. What does it look like having God first? We've laid down the, 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 the foundation. Clear naman, di ba? Tama ba? Clear? Clear lang kay Glenda, yung iba. 
Why is it important to ask if it's clear? Because if you miss that part, all the rest of the series, 10 weeks po to, sayang na, ibabasura natin. You understand? If you don't lay the proper foundation, if you don't accept the foundation, if you don't put it in your heart, the foundation, sayang yung iba. Pupunta na lang kayo dito, makikinig na lang kayo. Titignan nyo na lang kung pumayat na yung pastor nyo. O, di ba? G- g- ganun na lang mangyayari. But how does it look like? How does it look like to put God first? First, if God first in your family, income, relationships, schedule, trouble. Okay? How does it look like to put God first? Because God has to be first in everything. This is not the only five areas of our life that God has to be first, okay? But for me, for our pastors who, who met here, especially in Victory Green Hills, this is at least the top five, okay? The top five. First family. I wouldn't be here today, I wouldn't be your pastor if I didn't put God first. I wouldn't. Okay? Backtrack pa rin tayo. Backtrack ba tayo? Kung hindi ko pinili yung ways ni Lord, kung hindi, hindi ako nagsik kay God, asking for forgiveness, turn my ways, I wouldn't be here. But not only that, I wouldn't be your pastor if I didn't put God first over my family. I'm a Chinese, uh, I'm from, from a Chinese descent. So in our, hindi lang ako Chinese descent, panganay pa ako. So in our culture, I should be handling my dad's business. And guess what? It is a good business, okay? Up until now, it's very profitable. Okay, na, na, na pwedeng umupo lang ako, kumikita ako. Gan, ganun yun. Up until that time, 2008, when the Lord called me to full-time ministry, after meeting with Pastor Dennis, on my way home, I was driving, can't forget this, corner of Ortigas and Santolan and Gilmore. I was there, stuck there. I was so excited. I'm going to my dad. I'm going to tell my dad I'm going to be a full-time minister. And then it stopped me there. Oh no, what would my dad say? Flashback. Inheritance ko mawawala. Baka pumayat na ako. Mawawala yung kotse ko. Or iwan yung kotse, wala akong pang gasolina. Paano yung dalawang anak ko, nag-aaral sila sa exclusive school? Dali tayo dyan. Baka, di ba, baka magutom yung pamilya ko. Flashback. I was in that corner and I said, Lord, tama ba tong gagawin ko? Niloko lang ba ako ni Dennis? <laughs> birthday niya yun eh. Yung moko ko. Ay, birthday gift daw. <laughs> but then clearly, audibly, the Lord spoke to me and said, Remember, you were seeking an approval or an acknowledgement from your father. Remember, I am your father in God. I am your father. He said that. May takot pa rin when I, when, when I got to Binondo. My parents live in Binondo. Nakita nyo gano'ng ka-hardcore, di ba? Sa Binondo talaga nakatira. They were so happy, fully embraced me and said, At last, you now know your calling. You want to make things even heavier? They're not even Christians. They're not. Often you'll see them in church because they want to be with us. And I know that God is doing something now in their, in their lives. But they're not yet Christians. They're God-fearing, but... I remember one time, eh, nakarinig ko na lang sa kanila, sabi nila, okay na yun. Parang ikaw na lang yung tinight namin kay Lord. Huh? <laughs> Di ba? E, apat kami. So, 25%. Not bad. <laughs> God first in my family. This is my family. First commandment is the reason I am faithful to my wife. Without the first commandment, without being true to the first commandment, I don't know if I can be faithful to my wife. With all the intrigue, with all the, the temptations out there, I don't know. This is also why I teach the Bible, God's Word, and discipline my kids. It's not because they, I want them to act nice because they are pastor's kids. No, because God has entrusted me, my children, 
To be a good steward now, I have to invest my time and God's Word in them. Family first. That's why when there were times that, di ba, Verge would call me up and tell me, Verge, our worship leader kanina, Pastor Larry, can I invite you to my house? I had to say no. Pagpasensya mo na, two weeks ago lang yun. Sana nag na yun. <laughs> Why? Because I had to spend time with my family. Family first. How about in your income? FI, income. Ito medyo may, sometimes may cringe factor dito, no? lalo na sa mga, sa mga, uh, sa lahat. Because what we're teaching here, what the Bible is teaching is actually countercultural. The, bi- the culture would say, look for a job, earn, earn, a study, look for a job, earn, 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 save, 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 save. Or ang Filipino culture, save, save, save for your family. Di ba? Tapos, spend, spend, spend. Sometimes, dulo. Kung gusto mong mag-save. Sa church, uh, kung may manitira, bariya. Dati akala ko 20 pesos, and actually 5 pesos malaki na sa church. Bakit kasi dati naririnig ko palagi sa simbahan namin, barya. Right? And then nawalan yung barya, nakita ko 5 pesos na. Tapos sabi ko, okay, kung may kulay na, kung 20 pesos na, uy, mayaman yung 20. Lalo na yung lumabas yung 50 pesos na pula. Kasi yun yung natatanggap ko ng birthday ko, pula. I didn't know that God needs to be on top of everything, especially our income. I didn't know that. I didn't know that when we, that now, I'm, I'm doing an envelope system, that lahat nalalagay ko doon sa envelope, pang saving ko, pagbayad ko ng gasolina, pang bayad ko na, hindi ko nalalagay yung pang ko doon, bakit? Nakatabi na. Nauna na ho yun. Here's his word. Proverbs 3, 9, verse 10, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. First, first fruits. Ibig sabihin, this is in the context of, of, of uh, produce. When you go there, sometimes, di ba ganito, pag, example, uh, I've seen this. When they, when they sort out fruits, what would happen is they will have different categories, especially for banana. The first, yung sobrang ganda, they would put it for export. Di ba? May category ang banana, A, B, C, D. Do you know that? Yung B, napupunta sa mga restaurant. Yung C, napupunta sa grocery. Yung D, napupunta sa palengke. So, ibig sabihin, pag nag- sinection mo ngayon yung banana, ang first fruit, yung pinakamagandang i-export mo, kay Lord na yun. Do we do that with our offering? Do we do that with our tithes? I'm not saying it as your pastor for you to invest on church. You're not investing on the church. You're actually investing on, on you. First fruits. It is His nature to bless us, remember. He will give. I have a funny story about two kid, uh, about a kid. This kid got two, two five peso coin. He was walking down the street. May nagbigay sa kanya, binless siya ng, ng lola niya. Ten pesos, dalawa, dalawang coin. Tumatakbo siya, naglalakad siya. Tumatakbo, papunta na sa tindahan. Why? He wants to buy a candy. Okay, but he was saying, Lord, you get one, me, I get one. I'll buy candy. Takbo, takbo, takbo. Boom, nadulas. The five peso coin, one of the five peso coin fell on the gutter sa kanal. pag niya, pag-pag niya sarili niya, sabi niya, Lord, there goes your five peso. <laughs> Kinalimutan na si Lord. Sometimes it hurts. It hurts. When we didn't have a job, when we were asking God, Lord, establish all the work of my hands. Lord, bless me with this. Lord, when you give me tithes and offering. Wala ko pinapatamaan, ha? pero pinagpipray na yung tithes nyo. <laughs> Paghulog sa tithes and offering, Lord, ikaw na bahala, Lord. A thousand folds, in Jesus' name. Then when you got that job, then when you close a deal, malaki pala to, no? Dati pa isa-isang libo lang yung tithes ko per month. Ngayon, bilnes ako ni Lord, nakalimutan na rin si Lord. One of the hardest things for most Christians is to actually say, God, be first in my income. God, be first in my finances. I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm going through this, not in my tithes, but in my spending. 
always, Lord, are you first in this? Family. What's the second one? Income and then relationships. Relationships. Are there relationships in your life that are hostile? Ano ibig sabihin ng hostile? Ganito ho yung hostile. May press release kayo ng relationship nyo sa social media. Pero yung totoong relationship nyo, tinatago nyo. Why? Because it's in conflict with what the church teaches. I'm talking to our singles in the house. Do not be consumed with what the world sees as perfect beings, that you need to have a perfect partner. There's no perfect partner. There's no perfect partner. Do not sell you, yourself short to anyone just because para meron ako ma-post na I'm in a relationship. The best relationship that you need to have is first and foremost your relationship with God. Put Him first. Put Him first above all things. Above all things. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. There are some relationships that I had, not love relationships, but even friends that I had to let go. Why? Because I know that it would not look, it would not be good for me. I won't get anything from it. I'm not saying that I'm no longer friends or in fellowship with, with non-believers. Hindi po totoo yun. We make it a point. My wife and I make it a point that we get to meet a, a family or friends still outside from church. But then again, if those friends would, you would know would corrupt you, not just you, baka ikaw kaya mo, feeling mo kaya mo, pero yung mga anak nyo hindi maintindihan. Kung ano ginagawa ng tao, even the attitude, you have to let it go. Put God first. Relationship with Him first. Relationships that would honor Him. Relationships that would glorify Him. Relationships that would, that would even make you as parents to be examples for our children. Lordship is 100%. Okay? It's not 99%. It's not 99.9%. Kulang po yun. It's 100%. It's 100%. F is family, income, relationship, and then schedule. I've got to choose the word and prayer no matter what. That's why when I wake up in the morning, it's so tempting. When you wake up in the morning, when you grab your phone, di ba lalo na ngayon with Viber, with WhatsApp, with uh, Snapchat, with... Uh, Ang dami ho, dadami pa yan. Di ba dadami pa yan. Well, I can always I can always hide behind the fact that I'm a cam- that that I'm a minister of the word. There are people seeking me. Pastor Tito, so many counseling yan. Kung 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 po pwede lang. Pero no. Why? Because God has to be first in my schedule. I have to make it uh, w- 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 one of the person that really I I I admire and I I'm so blessed with is my wife. That every morning talaga makikita ko pag dilat ko pala nakaupo na siya sa upuan niya. No light in the room kasi tulog pa kami ni Lara. Just, just, just the sun, sunshine and she's reading there. It, all, it always forces me to do the same. It makes me want it more. Not forces me, but wants it more. Are we modeling it to our children? Are we modeling it to our children? We have to model our children. There are times that I'm, I'm reading, I have, a, I have to study, but then again, I have to read a book for Lara. I have to search for, uh, for the scripture for the week for Jello and Monty. I have to monitor them. Before we went to the States, I had to download an app for all of us, making sure that may nababasa sila. I had to study those apps. Yo, know, parents, ano ko rin yung excuse ko yun also for them, for us to have an interaction. Because if you read the same devotional, more or less, you can start already an interaction. My children are... 15 and 13 years old already. It's hard, di ba? Sometimes it's hard. Pipili ka. But now, because we go through the same devotional, we get to interact. Schedule. Is God first in your time? Would, ano mo hawakan mo? 
phone or Bible. Wag na kayo sumagot. Baka magsinungaling pa kayo. I, I found this last night. The Bible is on my phone, but the phone is not my Bible. And everybody say... I read this in the book, that at many moments in time, there can only be one thing. There's only one thing that you can do. Millennials, I'm talking to you. There's a myth. There's a book now that calls it multifunction. No, it's a myth. There's only one thing that you can do, especially with your schedule. Put God first. Balik ulit tayo sa Matthew 6.33. And everything else will be added unto you. Lord, I'm so busy. and dami ka rin cramming. Pwede mamaya ka na lang. No. Put God first. Uh, my staff can attest to that. Sometimes in an, an hour or two hour meeting, we would devote our time, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, praying, seeking God, reading the Bible. Minsan, sa, sa, sa corporate sense, sayang yung oras, tama ba? There's so many things that you can do. But then when we are aligned to the Lord, aligned kami, all of us as one aligned together and then we're aligned to the Lord, pag nag-meeting kami, tapos na lahat. Halos tapos na lahat. Hindi naman lahat. Halos tapos na lahat. If you cannot be, be, if you cannot prioritize your time with God, it's hard to prioritize everything else. Last trouble. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Put him first. Are you can't even go through one by one where you might be right now. But in every trouble, in every times of trouble, you should know where to run to first. It's good if you're part of our church community, you have victory group leaders. It's good. You can run to them. It's good if you have access to your pastors. Run to your pastors. But then again, in every trouble, you have to run to God first. Run to God first. God would use us. God would... would speak to you through us, but always remember who God is in your life. Who He is in your life. Are you putting Him first? Are you remembering Him first? Always put God first.